Golden State Warriors are one win away from punching their ticket to the NBA Finals, uh, going up 3-0 against the Dallas Mavericks tonight, stealing home court advantage from Dallas. And really, this was this was a back and forth game. This wasn't a blowout like the first two had been. This wasn't some miraculous comeback like game two. This was just a back and forth game, and the Warriors just in the end kind of just had more. Um, they used a big third quarter once again. Uh, not a massive avalanche type third quarter. I think they only outscored Dallas by like eleven, but built a cushion, and then just did a really good job of protecting that cushion for the rest of the game. Uh, the finals, 109-100. Um, Luka Doncic, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Jalen Brunson combined for 80 of Dallas's 100 points, which, in a vacuum, you love to see from guys like Brunson and, and Dinwiddie to be that supporting cast for Luka, who had 40 on his own. When he's scoring almost half the points for the team, you're going to need more from the role players. And in particular, this was a game where Davis Bertans, Maxi Cleaver, and Dorian Finney-Smith really just didn't contribute. And that honestly probably is the difference, um, at least on the Dallas side. I'll get to the Golden State difference in a second. But, it you know, there's, there's not a lot you can do. You, you have your three primary ball handlers, all doing really well scoring, all having massive games. Luka had a 40 and 11 rebounds. So he's he's doing his part. He has been an absolute superstar in the playoffs and in these um, conference finals. He's been wonderful. Everything is advertised. But them losing these games so decisively is really exposing what Dallas is going to need to do in the offseason if they want to just keep contending, if they want to like get over this hump. So... I don't know how likely it is, but if I'm Dallas, I immediately call DeAndre Ayton's people and see, you know, just kind of poke around and see what his interest would be playing with Luka. Because, like, that type of rim running is two-way center is something that they're going to desperately need. Because I don't think there's going to be a chance that they keep Dinwiddie and Jalen Brunson. Um, just because both guys have, have outplayed their contracts for... For the season, um, Brunson for really the first part of his career, he's going into his extension time. So he's absolutely outplayed his draft value and his his initial contract. Dinwiddie looked like a complete lost cause in Washington. Came to Dallas and completely revitalized his image. And I think both men are going to be be paid at a premium. Uh, so the, Dallas probably going to have to decide. Then you have the Luka extension one of those two, and then who knows what else they decide to do. But guys like Dorian Finney-Smith, Maxi Cleaver, Maxi Cleaver had zero points tonight, didn't even look like he wanted to shoot. Davis Bertans is making so much money to have two points in 13 minutes. And Dorian Finney-Smith had nine, um, and that was about it. Everything else was those three guys. And that's a tough spot to be in when the Warriors and their strategy is just basically... Pick who you want to beat you. Uh, tonight, it was Steph Curry who was hitting ridiculous threes where he's just turning and staring at the Dallas bench. I thought Dallas was going to fight. Like, I thought a fight was going to break out at that point because there had been all this talk about the Mavericks being fined $100,000 because of the, the bad bench decorum kind of standing on the court and distracting the Warriors and, and Theo Pinson in his white T-shirt, like, distracting the Warriors, calling for passes and stuff. Kind of childish stuff, and it's a little odd to get that upset about it. But then, like, Dallas had a pretty good point because they were pointing out all the times Draymond Green has just verbally absolutely abused these officials. No fines or anything yet for him. So a little bit of an odd emphasis, but it is what it is. But I, it really felt like Steph staring at the bench after before that three even went in was like, an absolute like slap in the face over all of this back and forth they looked ready to fight and then if, if that wasn't enough Andrew Wiggins with a poster so hard that Luka after the game even was like I hate that it was me but that was sick <laughs> like I wish I could dunk like that like do you know how filthy that dunk has to be for the person you dunked on to be like dude I wish 
Andrew Wiggins as the other big contributor for today's game. Him and Steph combined for 58 points. Uh, and Wiggins really just looks so comfortable in this offense and in this system. And maybe that's the benefit of being the, the you know fourth option most nights. But it doesn't matter. He's playing his game. He's playing it well. And he's making a huge difference. Like, Luka had 40 tonight, so it's a bad example. But, like, Wiggins' two-way effort has been great. And the Warriors, for them, it's a great benefit to have that, where it's like, okay, Steph, who else? Wiggins can have a night. Jordan Poole's been able to just slash in and out of the Dallas defense. Basically, it will. Um, Clay Thompson seems to really heat up in the second half. Even if he comes out with poor shooting in the first half, the second half he seems to be, you know, dialed in a little bit more. He seems like he hits every big shot he takes in the second half. Um, and it's just too much for, for Dallas to contend with. Dallas needs to upgrade those role players. They need like one more piece that they can put next to Luka, um, a max guy if possible. I don't know who else really comes to mind like outside of DeAndre Ayton because I don't see any other stars being available. Like Obviously, the ideal person to put next to Luka would be someone like Paul George or someone like Zion Williamson or someone like RJ Barrett who are like, they can do enough on their own to get shots or they can facilitate and move the ball and and provide that spacing and like but we don't there's no world where i see that happening like i don't see any of those teams giving up those players for any amount of capital that the Mavericks could have because the Mavericks just frankly aren't bad enough to have good worthwhile picks and they have not been in years they've always been like at least a good team, even if they're not like championship contenders, they're not a lottery team. So it's a really interesting spot for them to be in because the players that they need are just not coming. So they have to be smart with who they pick in um, in drafting in those those role players that they do sign. Now Luca will probably generate a lot of interest um, in people wanting to come play with him just in general because of his talent, but you got to have a better strategy than just banking on that all the time. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I mean, granted, this could all be premature. Dallas could rat, like rattle off a couple wins, make us make his series, make Golden State work for it. I don't want to, you know, completely say that it's absolutely over because, you know, it's not. You, that's why they play the game. Um, but for, for this series, for right now, this Dallas team just looks outmanned. Like the the side by side comparison, it just you you lose the battles going side by side down the depth chart pretty quick to the Warriors star players. They have all these dudes that can beat you. Damian Lee was kind of getting left open and kind of getting exposed on the offensive end. And what did they do? They plugged in Moses Moody, who's not you know a lights out scorer himself, but I watched him just drive in to the whoever was standing at the rim countless times tonight they just he wouldn't he wasn't even waiting for the rest of the warriors to get back he would just get the ball and fly up the court and just draw contact and like that gives you that's another like that's another stressor on a defense so the warriors have all these dudes who are comfortable doing that and then they play all you know so well connected and so well in sync there's just no stopping that with the role players that Dallas has. And, I mean, I'll, I'll be really interested to see what happens with the Eastern Conference Finals because I think it looks like it's going to be the Warriors. Part of me really wants it to be the Heat because the Andrew Wiggins, Jimmy Butler piece of it all would just be beautiful to see a, like played out in the media and all the stories that would come out about him. But who knows? I mean, I don't think that series is close to over. Unless all these injuries that Boston seems to have are as bad as they looked in the moment, which I don't know if it ever is. Um, I mean, granted, there's of course there was some where it's as bad as it looks, but like Marcus Smart looked like his ear was done and he came right back in and hit a three. Jason Tatum looked pretty hurt and I believe he came back. Like I actually did not see any of Game Three um, of the Eastern Conference Finals, so I don't want to talk about it too much because I just I didn't see it I was busy all day um and just I saw the box scores and stuff and kind of saw what people were saying but that was about it so we'll see what happens I think the Warriors um it's going to be a fun finals if it if it ends up being Golden State 
it's going to be a fun finals no matter who it is because the Warriors have those types of fun, exciting players. And both Boston and Miami have the type of players that live to try to, like, one, just completely distinguish that sense of fun, and two, try to go toe for toe. And that's always where, you know, you get the best games are when you have two teams playing, like, a high-octane, up-tempo basketball, not a lot of fouls, which, let's face it, it's going to be a ton of fouls no matter what, because that's what it is now. Um, But, I mean, we'll see what happens. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to completely write Dallas off, but just it just looks like Golden State is is operating at such a high level that Dallas just doesn't have the manpower to match up, which is a shame because this is an incredible performance from Luka Doncic night in and night out. So hopefully this this you know kicks Dallas into high gear in terms of really maximizing his his abilities his strengths, and setting them up for more deep runs to come in the future. Um, and for Golden State, it's just it's crazy to see them back in this position after the, the, you know, the injury-filled years. I was reading about Clay Thompson, and it was saying and if, they, if they win and make the finals, that'll be his sixth straight finals appearance season that he's played in, and it'll be six of nine years um, making the finals which is just incredible. It's a testament to the longevity of the Warriors, the team building, and then just the the individual greatness of those players. So who knows? It looks like the Warriors probably going to be heading back to the finals, which good for basketball, I'm sure, to have to have this, the star power and everything. Um, so we'll see what happens with uh, Game 4 in Dallas on Tuesday. Um, let me know your thoughts on the series. Uh, if you're disappointed at all, what you think Dallas might do in the off season. Um, I'll go through that a little bit more too, if they do end up getting eliminated and then thoughts on Eastern conference finals game three. I've seen a lot of split opinions about that. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially cause I didn't see it. So if you have thoughts on that game and that series as well, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, thank you very much for watching. Have a good rest of the day and see you soon.